Hi guys, it's Kristen. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I write a blog called Blue Egg Brown Nest where I talk about chalk painting techniques, design, vintage finds, vintage love and decor. Um, check it out at blueeggbrownnest.com. Um, thank you to all those that do follow me and read. You guys are the best. Um, I'm actually doing a bunch of um, cane painted pieces for different clients this week, ironically, um, and I thought it would be worthwhile kind of talking about how to paint something textured like this, because it's not totally straightforward. It's not a flat piece, it's not a curved piece, there's actually um, a lot of texture that goes into it, and there is kind of a certain way to do it. You uh, want to use a smaller brush. This is my, like, literally my $5 brush from Home Depot. It's so old, it's actually starting to point at the end, but I don't mind. It's just a um, plastic handle, um, and it's synthetic. Uh, but you do want a smaller brush that you can really control. You don't want to use a great big fat brush um, on the cane, just because you don't want it to clump. The last thing you want is it to clump in these holes and clump in areas. I mean, once you do that, you're kind of screwed because you have to somehow poke through that and sand it down. And you don't want to be sanding cane. You just don't want to get into that predicament. So go slowly, use your small brush, um, and, and you're going to work in a circular motion. You're going to go very deliberately. So um, this is kind of what I've already started. You can see, you can, if you look kind of from the side, it's like one of those, um, you know, those things that came out in like the 80s where you had to like visualize on a picture and then you kind of see certain images come through. If you're my age, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but if you stand to the side, you can kind of see where it's painted and where I need to go over it a little bit, where there's a little more brown. Um, so I left this one blank. Uh, raw so I could show you kind of what I'm talking about um, You want to take your color uh, the clients both chose uh, country gray which um, I have to say Most of the time when you're doing when I'm doing bedroom furniture, they do choose country gray. It, it's not gray It's more of a It's a beige color, but with hints of gray. So it's not uh, it's not leaning towards the cream. It's leaning towards more of the gray. And it's just a beautiful, soft, but also warm color. Um, you'd be really happy with it in a bedroom set. My girls have all country gray um, dressers and beds. So FYI, it's a great bedroom color to have. So I don't want to get it on my uh, doors here. But again, you want to just start really slow. And you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. And what I end up doing is I end up going kind of in a circular motion because you're going to get, you're going to find that certain areas, like when I first dip the brush and first put it on my piece, those areas are going to get more paint. And again, the last thing you want is to, it to get clumpy. And there's a lot of surfaces and a lot of crevices that you kind of have to work through. It's okay to have a little bit of brown for sure, because again, it is like that shabby, distressed piece, but you don't want to have areas where it's just clumping. So again, work in a circular motion. I will warn you again, really clean, really wipe off your brush. Sometimes I even start like on a flat surface and then I go in just to get any excess off. And work in that circular motion so you kind of get all the little, uh, you know, the cane is going every which way and there's so many crevices. And you just want to do one layer and let it dry and then go back over. Don't try to do everything on cane in one uh, coat because it it won't um, you won't be happy with it yet. you will clump so again just work in your circular motion 
I don't even know if you can see. So you can see a little bit of brown here. Maybe you can't see it quite clearly, but I'll go over that the second for the second coat. I'm just going to show you a little bit more. And see, you're getting a nice light, very light coating. And then you're going to go back over it. Um, what else can I tell you about this piece? This piece has metal, and I go over it. Um, because I think the metal is a little bit distracting. I talked today on my blog about appliques, which are awesome. I think you should all check it out. Um, just to go over to this chair really briefly. Um, I don't know if you can quite tell from your angle, but I did one coat on this, and I can still see some black. The cane was actually a little bit black on this one. It wasn't quite brown. But I'm going to go over it. This is my second coat on this piece. Again, I kind of want to brush it off and then go in and again do my circular motion where I think it needs a, le a little extra coating. But be careful. You want to go really, like again, I say, you want to go really slowly because you don't want it to clump up in areas you will notice it right away um, and it'll look messy. You don't want to do that. And especially when you're working on pieces for clients, you need to take your time. And I'm just going to continue to go over it where I see that there are some, um, some spots that are a little bit darker. If it were my piece, I kind of like that, and I probably wouldn't do such a... Um, I wouldn't do a second coat that really had such... Uh, gave it such coverage. Um, but when I'm doing it for a client, I try to stay pretty consistent because um, because I think they're happier that way. I think they're happier with um, with it looking a little more consistent. Um, and if they're not, then I take a picture and uh, like I'm going to take a picture of this after I start distressing it, and the client is actually going to tell me if she wants it more distressed. So. That's how we work with the uh, with Kane. And check out my other videos on chalk painting. And come say hi in Blue Egg Brown Nest. Like me on Facebook because I do put um, updates on my pieces online quite often. Thank you again for reading. You guys are the best.